there are a number of different types of imperfect markets in an economy. For example, monopolies, monopolistic competition, as well as oligopolies. In this video, we'll discuss oligopolies as one of the types of an imperfect market by covering its definition, as well as some of the characteristics of an oligopoly. We'll also cover the kink demand curve. We'll also discuss the non-price competition, as well as explain the concept of collusion. So, remember to support the channel by clicking the subscribe button. Now, let's explore this topic of oligopolies as part of the subject of economics. Let's first explain what an oligopoly is. An oligopoly exists when a small number of large companies are able to influence the supply of a product or service to a market. By controlling the supply of the product or service on the market, oligopolies aim to keep its prices and profits high. Oil companies are one of the best examples of an oligopoly. A duopoly is a specific type of oligopoly where only two firms dominate the entire market. Each firm's actions significantly influence the other, and their interactions can shape market conditions. Unlike in a perfectly competitive market, where numerous small firms compete, or a monopoly, where one firm controls the entire market. An oligopoly consists of a few firms whose decisions significantly impact each other. An oligopoly has a number of characteristics. In this next section, we'll discuss some of them, starting with the number of businesses operating in such a market. An oligopoly is a market structure dominated by only a few large number of sellers, that sell the same product in a market. Since the sellers are few, this limits competition within this market structure. As indicated, a market structure that is dominated by only two firms is known as a duopoly, which is a form of an oligopoly. The firms in an oligopoly market structure also either sell a differentiated product or a homogeneous product. The market is called a pure oligopoly when the products sold are homogeneous. When the products sold are differentiated, then such a market is referred to as a differentiated oligopoly. An oligopoly market structure is also characterized by a number of barriers to entry. High development costs are usually a barrier that blocks other businesses from entering the market. Barriers to entry into this market are not artificial, but natural, as they are caused by the economies of scale that the few large existing oligopolies enjoy such as advertising, brand loyalty, and sunk costs. Oligopolies also usually have considerable control over prices, most particularly when they have joint decision-making, which may result in huge economic profits. They are also often price-makers, though they have to charge their prices at the kinked point. We'll discuss this concept of kinked point later on in the video. Both buyers and sellers, in this market structure, have incomplete information. Oligopolies keep a close eye on each other, as they do not know what the other competitor will do, and what will be the reaction of the other players in this market structure, as well as the reaction of buyers. Collusion is illegal but common in the oligopoly market structure. Oligopolists collude when they want to limit competition within the industry, maintain high levels of profit, and reduce insecurities. The concept of collusion will also be discussed later on in the video. As indicated, one interesting aspect of oligopolies is the kinked demand curve theory. This theory suggests that an oligopolist faces a demand curve that is more elastic for price increases and less elastic for price decreases. If an oligopolist raises its prices, customers are likely to switch to competitors, causing a significant drop in quantity demanded. This is referred to as an elastic response. If however, the firm lowers its prices, competitors are likely to match the price cut, resulting in a smaller increase in quantity demanded. This is referred to as an inelastic response. The kink in the demand curve represents these different elasticities, creating a discontinuity that discourages firms from changing prices frequently. To understand the demand curve of an oligopolist, let's follow this graph. Suppose the oligopolist is selling at the original or present price of 10 bucks and 9 units of output are sold. 
Total revenue is 90 bucks. If the firm tries to increase profit by increasing the price by 2 bucks to 12 bucks, the quantity demanded would fall to 2 units and the total revenue would decrease to 24 bucks. If the firm tries to increase profit by reducing the price by 2 bucks to 8 bucks and increasing its total sales, the total revenue would be 80 bucks. The oligopolist is therefore faced with a difficult decision because in both instances, it will not be beneficial to the firm. Increasing the price of goods, or reducing the price to increase sales, will not lead to greater revenue earned. It is often said that, in oligopolistic markets, firms often rely on non-price competition strategies to attract customers and maintain market share. Let's discuss this. Oligopoly firms are reluctant to change prices, because a price war will drive prices down, and profits will be eliminated. They often make use of non-price measures to attract customers and increase their market share. An important aspect of non-price competition is to build brand loyalty, product recognition, and product differentiation. This is done by means of advertising and marketing. As a result, oligopoly firms tend to spend a substantial amount of money on this. Other forms of non-price competition include extended shopping and business hours, doing business over the internet, after-sales services, offering additional services, loyalty rewards for customers, as well as door-to-door deliveries. As previously indicated, an oligopoly is sometimes characterized by some form of collusion. Collusion takes place when rival firms cooperate by raising prices and by restricting production in order to maximize their profits. When there is a formal agreement between firms to collude, it is called a cartel. A cartel is a group of producers whose goal is to form a collective monopoly in order to fix prices and limit supply and competition. In general, cartels are economically unstable because there is a great incentive for members not to stick to the agreement or to cheat by cutting prices illegally and to sell more than the quotas set by the cartel. Although there is an incentive to collude, there is also an incentive to compete. This has caused many cartels to be unsuccessful, in the long term. Overt, or formal agreements to form cartels, are generally forbidden by law, in most countries. However, they continue to exist nationally and internationally. Sometimes in an oligopoly market, a dominant firm will increase the price of a product, in the hope that its rivals will see this as a signal to do the same. This is referred to as price leadership, and is an example of a tacit collusion. In conclusion, and just to recap, oligopolies are market structures where a few large firms dominate. These firms are interdependent, face high entry barriers, and often engage in non-price competition to attract customers. The kink demand curve theory illustrates how price changes can impact demand elasticity differently. Non-price competition, through advertising, product innovation, and customer service, is vital. Additionally, firms often engage in collusion, either explicitly or tacitly, to maximize joint profits. We've come to the end of this video. Remember that, you can always re-watch the video if you need more understanding on the topic. We also hope we were able to provide more clarity on the topic. If we have, please leave us a comment below this video, because we'd love to hear from you and what you have learned from this video. You can also subscribe and like this video to show your appreciation and also share it on your social media. Until we meet again, happy learning from Kano Academy. Stay creative. Stay curious. And stay connected.